All right. What's going on, everybody? How are you? David, good to see you. Stuart, awesome to see you, my friend. It's always a pleasure. Today we uh, have Aaron. Super pumped about this. Oh, I'm glad to be on. Thanks for inviting me, guys. Yeah, Amen. you know, sometimes we have to uh, bring Army guys on as well. So, Aaron, you're the uh, you're our Army guy of the month. Well, he was Just Navy. Remember, he was I Navy. Started too. Navy as well. That's right. That's right. Well, then I'll just shut up now. I'm done. My part of this is done. <laughs> Stu, enjoy your interview. <laughs> Aaron. Yeah, man. So Aaron Hale, uh, he's a part of, of our War Room Mastermind, and uh, he's been motivating the heck out of David and I and, and everyone else, uh, for that matter. Um, and uh, Aaron, we're excited about digging into your story. And uh, just um, learning about, you know, who, who you are and, and, you know, all the things that you're up to, because I, I know you're doing a lot. Um, so if you could, just for, for our listeners, just give us a little bit of background about uh, who Aaron Hale is, you know, um, you're kind of start with your military stuff and then, and then we can go into your entrepreneurial stuff. Absolutely. No, uh, I, I, I tell people, um, I kind of grew up as the, the all American slacker. Uh, I grew up in, um, you know, Midwest America, you know, suburban Akron, Ohio. And I had just enough talent, uh, up through, uh, elementary and high school to not have to work very hard just to get by. I had just about anything. So, um, uh, my mom always talks about how I charmed my way through high school rather than doing my homework. But uh, uh, what happened was, you know, I was, I was getting B's and C's until I got to college. And then that was a whole different game. And everybody who, who uh, was, you know, working hard, had that strong work ethic, quickly just passed me right by. And I soon um, uh, found myself uh, kicked right out of college. It just, uh, my academics are so bad. Uh, I guess that happens when you forget where your classes are. But uh, <laughs> um, nice. it, was, it, was, it was one of those um, terrible pivot moments, the, you know, the, 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 the realization that I've, I've got to change uh, who I am drastically. And uh, it really was a self-reflection uh, reflection time. So I decided I needed to find a path, whatever that path was, because I didn't have any goals. I didn't have any ambition. I didn't know where I was uh, going. So of course, right where I was, was lost. And uh, in fact, in mo most of my life up until uh, a month before enlisting in the Navy, I absolutely knew I'd never be in the military. And so, uh, but what I, I what happened was that I, I cooking was always a passion. I could cook um, um, since I could reach over uh, the counter. I was interested in cooking. My um, uh, whole family's got this artistic streak. Uh, very creative. My mom and my brother are terrific sketch and paint artists. Uh, my creative um, gene led me into the kitchen. So. After I'd um, bombed at international business in, in college, I decided, you know what, I'll become a chef, I'll go to culinary school, and I'll, I'll be on, it, on the path uh, to somewhere, doing something, I'll have a goal. You know, the only problem was I didn't have any more tuition left. So nice. uh, uh, in comes the military GI Bill. Uh, the recruiter told me I could do tuition assistance while I was in. So, you know, four years out, and I'll go to culinary school. Right? That's it's common common story. And uh, that's how the they get you, right? That's how they get yeah. you. Well, that's. Uh, I mean, what happened was is it, right as soon as I got into basic training, they gave me the the leadership role. 
um, because they said, you know, the the, the division um, uh, commanders, they said, uh, who here, they lined us all up in rows and um, in the barracks and said, who here's got college experience? So I raised my hand. I mean, it was not a very good experience, but I had some. And only one other guy raised his hand. So guess what? Number one and number two. <laughs> that was it. Uh, so he said, uh, what, what, what's your rate going to be? And I chose MS. It would be term, uh, MS management specialist, which would become CS, culinary specialist, because I want to be a cook. Why not be a cook in the Navy and get the OJT and all that? Anyways, um, I was given these before I was ready, because I definitely wasn't ready to be a leader in the, in the military, in the Navy. They made me a leader, and I had to grow into the position. And then I found that I was being promoted, ad advanced quickly uh, beyond my peers. Uh, and I soon found myself um, a petty officer a couple just a few short years later and um cooking for the commander of the u.s sixth fleet in Gaeta, italy and that's awesome yeah it was, it was absolutely incredible uh i got to tour around the mediterranean with uh, the admiral and we'd run up the flag every once in a while and uh in a foreign port we'd throw a reception on the the deck and i get to go uh explore almost all of the, the the countries that border the Mediterranean, at least the front, fun ones. And um, and off duty, I lived in Italy and I got to tour around Italy and uh, Europe. It was amazing. It was a, a hardship duty. It was not. <laughs> but but um, this was uh, early 2000s. So um, I watched the uh, uh, World Trade Center happened on CNN. I watched uh, the first uh, missile strikes on Baghdad on CNN. And I, uh, I, I realized that I, I, was, I was growing out of the selfish uh, reasons for joining the military. My goals, um, my work ethic, my um, future plans, and it was becoming more about my service. It was about the Navy. It was about the military. It was about you know, the, the sailors I was working with and the mission, and it became bigger, and it, it became much better. And then we had both wars kicking off or in full swing. And that's when I decided that I wanted to do something more um, with my talents, with my, with my service. And that's when I volunteered to deploy to Afghanistan for the first time in 2006. Uh, and I was still a Navy cook, so they put me in a chow hall. So I went from cooking for the Admiral and 35 of his top staff to cooking for four, five, 600 ISAF NATO troops. Uh, in Fab Farah, way out in West uh, Afghanistan. Ironically, uh, there were about three Italian um, special forces platoons there. So I got to practice some of the lingo I learned in Italy, in Afghanistan. But uh, um, i that's when I met some EOD technicians, uh, Explosive Ordnance Disposal, the, the military's bomb squad. I got to learn all about that. These guys were um, doing maintenance checks on all of their equipment and tools uh, out of the big armored truck one day. And I was walking past and I just kind of, it was like a cool guy garage sale, you know? Uh, it was just all this robots and bomb suits. And uh, I started talking to them and um, everything about it, it was just that is what I was meant to do the tight knit brotherhood, the technical aspect of the job, and the fact that these uh, people are uh, first responders, they're lifesavers on the battlefield. And of course, you get to blow things up. But uh, uh, everything about it um, told me I needed to become an EOD technician. So I put in uh, my chit, 
to request to go from culinary specialist to EOD technician, and the Navy said no. I, we like your cooking too much. <laughs> You're too important to us. We want you to cook. Yeah. So um, they uh, they said no. And by the time uh, my deployment was up, my contract time was also up. And if the, and everything's waverable, nobody wants to tell you. Uh, I could have kept pressing, but um, I I decided uh, to let my contract expire. And then I left uh, the Navy and I went over to the Army recruiter and said, I want to go with EOD. And they welcomed me in. So I trained as a soldier and an EOD technician. And I deployed to Iraq and then again to Afghanistan in 2011 as an EOD team leader and uh, made it about eight months of a 12 month rotation before my injury. Um, it was uh it was it was actually right about the holidays time i i had just gotten back from uh the to my two weeks of r and r vacation uh leave time uh, back home and i got to got to see my my firstborn son turn one and i got to witness the whole family gathering for thanksgiving and it's just the it was the best last page in a photo album that I could I kind of ever ask for. All my friends or all my family together smiling, mm -hmm. and it stayed with me forever. Uh, but I was I came came back to Afghanistan, and, and I literally just threw the luggage in the back of our armored truck, and we were heading from the airfield. I jumped on a convoy. And headed back out to our command outpost uh, where uh, my team was running our missions. And along the way, the convoy uh, leader called out to uh, our truck and said that there was, uh, was an item in the side of the road, uh, a suspected IED, and asked us to get to work on it. Um, uh, long story short, there was a secondary device while I was working on the primary device and the uh, secondary device just hadn't been detected yet. And as I was, I was working on it, um, the second one detonated and it took uh, my eyes. Um, I'm totally 100% blind, except you know, and these are prosthetics. Uh, it blew up my eardrums. I lost some hearing, but I could still hear. Uh, it cracked my my skull in a few places, and I was actually leaking spinal fluid uh, out my nose. Uh, that that would um, the, the the cracks would get patched up, but then it would come back later to get me. Um, there'd be complications with that. Wow! But uh, in 14 minutes, the medevac chopper had me in the air, and I was heading right back to the airfield. And within 48 hours, I was in Walter Reed, lying in bed. Um, blind um coming to grips with uh what this meant for the rest of my life i never even considered you know what this would be like and you don't think about it it's not something you you consider uh until it happens and i uh you know the, i call it those demons you know, those what ifs the why me's the self uh um uh, depression type things. Very, it, it started coming in, uh, and it was it was the my service fellow service members, the fellow warriors um, that uh, first picked me up. I, mean, I, have, I have an incredible uh, support system with my my family, and the training um, uh, I received in resilience. Uh, through my few years in the military all helped but it was the fact that I was in Walter Reed and there were injured warriors up and down the halls and, and the fact that all of them were fighting their own battle and I knew I realized that with all this around me that my life doesn't belong to just me I, 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 I'm a stakeholder in my life but I wear all these hats. I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a son, husband, uh, brother, um, 
and I'm, I'm a fellow warrior, you know, I'm a, I'm a soldier and I need to fight for them. I can't quit. And it, 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 quitting never became an option. It just wasn't, wasn't part of the cards. So I decided if I was going to be a blind person, I was going to be the best darn blind person I could be. So I started learning how to use these accessible tools and, and, um, and, and techniques and things and learn how to use the cane. And I, as soon as I could get the, the, the phone to work with the, 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 the text-to-speech, I was, I was doing searches on the internet for blind plus, you know, you name the keyword, work, uh, learn, study, read, um, go outside, um, you know, mountains, rivers, bike, run. A few names kept popping up. One was Eric Weinmayer. He's the first blind person to climb Mount Everest. And I found him. I sought him out. And I went, I climbed a mountain with him. And then uh, there was Lonnie Bedwell, the, uh, the first blind person to kayak the entire Grand Canyon in a solo boat. I sought him out. And I went kayaking with him. And uh, there was Ivan Castro, who stayed on active duty while fully blind, got his commission uh, as a ranger, and uh, made it uh, into retirement, I think even uh, past 20. And, and I, I, I sought him out, and I talked to him. And he said he uh, always... Um, always runs at the at minimum of three races uh the air force marathon the army 10 mile and the marine corps marathon well i've never run a marathon in my life but i registered for all three of those it sounds like a good idea <laughs> and so then cool. somebody said well you know you're and i was i was i was stationed like actually you got sent back to eglin air force base where the uh eod schoolhouse was uh to recover and I said, I, I don't I really, I don't want to retire. I want to um, become an instructor. So they let me do that. And while inst uh, instructing, I'm talking to these guys, I'm going on these adventures. Um, and uh, I, I haven't talked me into these three races, but somebody like my coach said, you need to run something nearby local. So I signed up for the Pensacola marathon. And I don't even know how I got talked into the San Antonio marathon, but I had four marathons and the army 10 miler all within four months of each other. And I'd never run a race in my life. <laughs> so, wow. uh, just, uh, if, if it was, maybe I was taking things to extremes. But, and, and maybe it's a bit cliche to call it the second lease on life, but it was one of those lessons that, um, you know, I, I used to say someday all the time, mm. Man, it'd, be, it'd be cool to climb a mountain someday, mm. you know, it'd be cool to, you know, you know, work on my finances someday. It'd be great to run a marathon someday, uh, you know, you name it. But someday never comes because today gets in the way. So, it, I mean, it really does. If you don't plan for uh, tomorrow, today takes care of it for you. So, I, I I started making these lists of things. I'm like, I, I can do this, and let's do it now. So. Uh, if I was gonna um, run a marathon, I register for it. And then I figured how to do, to figure out how to do it. Um, I, I, I signed up to, you know, I, I, I found Eric and climbed a mountain. And you know, like, I've never climbed a mountain before. And you know, it's really hard to find a good mountain to train on in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Wow. I guess you could climb the same dune on the beach like 10,000 times. But I don't know if that would replicate the uh, experience for you. Well, um, uh, it was actually Eric in his book, Touch the Top. He was talking about how uh, in climbing Mount Everest, uh, when you're going, going across the crevasses, uh, the Sherpas would tie together these aluminum uh, ladders and you'd have to walk across the, the rungs to get across the, um, the crevasse. And being blind, that's like 
can you imagine something uh, more scary or dangerous than trying to to do that no. so he uh-huh. and his guide jeff um set up cinder blocks in the backyard and strung uh, ladders and practice in the backyard well i did something along those same lines i packed a a, a, a pack like 100 pounds uh, uh of gear and then i found the tallest building i could and i just went up and down those stairs you know all day long and um it was a little different because um they the these these condominium buildings in destin florida they don't air condition their their stairways so it was pretty brutal uh, but um it's all good training right uh so um I was uh, trying to climb uh, frigid mountains in like 120 degrees with uh, staircases. <laughs> wow. What, uh, what mountain did you, did you end up climbing uh, with him? Well, uh, I, uh, a couple of mountains, actually. Um, on the 10th anniversary of Eric's uh, ascent of Mount Everest, he wanted to commemorate it by taking a team of all wounded veterans up the sister summit, um, Lavache. And he called it Soldiers of Summits. And that became a program. And I was on the third iteration in 2013. I joined the Soldiers of Summits 2013 Peruvian Andes trip. And we went to, uh, we climbed an 18,000 foot peak in the Andes. Um, So in preparation for that, we flew out to, you know, I flew out to Colorado, joined the team, and we do some practice mountains. So we got a couple 14ers in also. Wow. Dude, that's awesome, man. There's like, there's like, there's probably 95% of Americans, you know, that don't even climb a mountain here in the United States that can see, right? And, and you're going and doing this this stuff. Like, I'm I'm curious, you know what what kind of you know do you just like hear something, see like hear something, read about something that like piques your interest, and then you're like, I'm gonna go do that, and then decide to to go you know challenge yourself and go do it. Like, how do you how do you get these like where do these ideas come from to you know, go and challenge yourself to do do something. Well, part of it is a uh, intense fear of being uh, swallowed up by my couch. Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, I've, 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 we've heard so many stories about veterans coming home from battle uh, yeah. just to climb into a bottle. Or that you know they, they start popping down pills or whatever their self medication is, and just wasting away until um, something tragic happens. Yeah. Uh, and that terrified me. And, and um, like I said, I've got this incredible support system. I've got an awesome family, uh, and uh, I'm not I'm not built that way. So. Uh, the other thing was, is that each achievement, you know, it releases the, 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 the endorphins, the dopamine, the oxytocin, all that awesome stuff. Yeah. Um, every achievement uh, builds momentum and is addictive. So uh, each, each time I would go out and I would make these friends, we go do something just epic to, at the end uh, you know is uh straining our own um mindset stretching it a little bit further it's it was like in um uh financial uh discussions when you talk about the financial thermostat right. where you know you 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 feel like you should be right here and once you get to that next step this isn't good enough anymore um every time I'd uh, like I run a race, I would either want to go further or faster. 
or do it again. I mean, it, it just, it, look, I don't want to go back to not running. I don't want to go back to not being active because now today it feels like if I slow down or if I, and I'm just coming off a break and I can just feel my, uh, the body start to fall apart and I hate it. I, I hate that feeling. I want to, you know, I want to keep doing things that are good for me, both mentally and physically. I love it, dude. And it, what it also does is it, it pushes others. It pushes us up, pushes others to do the same thing. Like, you know, I mean, that's um, the amazing piece that you're performing. It's incredibly motivating. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and it's probably one of the most made it motivating things for me too. And most fulfilling things about my situation. All right, I could use it as an excuse or I could use it as a tool. And I use it as a tool to push me. I don't want to, I want I don't want my my disabilities to be what what defines me. But I can use it as a motivator for myself and for others. And if I can tell my story and it inspires others, then wow, that's even better. That's um that's, that's why I, 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 I'm an open book with this. I, one example is uh, when training for my first um, first marathon, I, I kind of reached out to an organization called Team Red, White, and Blue. And they have chapters all over the country. And uh, whether it, it's, it's really a veteran service organization on uh, physical fitness. And they, they say they're not a running club, but most, most of the time it's running. Yeah. Um, but I contacted the local chapter and I said, I'm, um, I just registered for a marathon and I could use a guide on the road. Like I could use some training partners. So the, the chapter you know, president or camp, team captain, whatever they call him, um, reached out and not only did he volunteer to run with me, but, um, we set up like a Sunday um, running event for the team red, white, and blue. So anybody who wanted to come out, you could run as fast or as far as you wanted to, but it would just be an event. You'd go go, and and I had a, a training schedule, so we would run as far as I was supposed to. But we had we had like a um, um, a vehicle with refreshments going along the course, and we would just run. And the first first day, it was, it was like three or four or five people. And then the next week, uh, it was more like seven to, or eight. And the next day, there was next week, there was 15. And it, it grew and it stopped becoming Aaron's training run. And it was the Sunday long run. Mm -hmm. And that thing's still going on. It's awesome. awesome. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And in you know, when you're in a group, you can, you're happier. You're, 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 I was running with all these people. They're like, all right. And these guys were talking about, you know, I'd sign up for a 10K. I've never done anything more than a 5K. And that, that inspires me. Because these guys, they're, they're pushing their limits too. These folks running with me. And I mean, that's, that's community right there. And I love that feeling. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that really stuck with me as you're talking to is, is the, you know, you mentioned you, you didn't have a lot of drive or uh, goals, go to college, you face adversity by failing out. So then you're like, well, you know what, I'm going to just join the military and go do this other thing. And as you're in the military, you face some setbacks. And it drives you to do the next step, go do EOD, which is you know, anybody who's <clears throat> been in the military, or even if you haven't, EOD is a, is a step above, at least in the Navy, it's, you know, it's uh, and very similar in the army, but it's, it's a, a step above everybody else. And just right, you know, you're, you're approaching like Navy SEAL level training and, and, and that type of, you know, a lot of times you guys train together. And, and so it's, you know, for us, special warfare, I'm sorry, special ops. And, uh, you know, you do that, and you face significant life adversity. And, and then you do the, what I love is you, you started to do these things 
that we all can do, but that, that the evil of someday just, it, 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 it stops that progression. It doesn't let you achieve your, your highest potential. And, and I'm kind of curious, do you think, do you think you would be doing these things and living this rich, fulfilled life and, and achieving such huge accomplishments if you didn't face such huge adversity? Um, no, no, I don't, I don't know if I'd ever realized um, even part of my potential because mm -hmm. You know, uh, I was a procrastinator. I was I was pretty lazy, actually. I did um, okay getting by, but uh, like I said, there wasn't there wasn't that ambition until I was put in a place where I had to. Um, I was I was I was in that that uh, place of discomfort, um, and I found out that. Uh, we're not, we, no, we're never, we never know uh, what we're capable of until we're put into a place where I need to find out. So I was forced to push beyond, I, I was, I was forced out of my comfort zone. Uh, I was, I was, I was put in a, you know, pitch black world and had to learn how to do everything. So everything became a little bit more effort and then some things became a little bit uh less effort than i thought they were or i mean um you know before my service before the military you know just lacing up my shoes and going out did not that, that was beyond beyond my comfort that was even, even range of thought you know uh but then i joined the military and it was very uncomfortable at the beginning <laughs> uh, but you know, I found out that I, I I did like running in the military. I didn't uh, exactly lace up um, in my civvies very often, but the the army kept me, the army and the navy kept me pretty pretty fit. And then um, I went to another level of discomfort, and sometimes it, it's it's out of my control. But I found that I can control the discomfort by introducing myself to new experiences and it's even more rewarding and by introducing myself to the level of discomfort it's like building resilience towards uh the unknown obstacles that come up so uh, I don't know if that was on cue with what uh, or on track with what you asked, but I don't know where what kind of trajectory my life would have taken if I hadn't been injured. But I'm extremely grateful for the challenges in my life, and I'm extremely grateful for um, recognizing what's important in my life now. Yeah, I, I just I think it's such a beautiful thing that. A lot of people from the outside looking in could say you lost so much, right? You lost the ability to see, you know, uh, just you lost so much. And, and, and I, I'm looking at it like, gosh, this guy is living a more abundant life than most people I know. And, yeah, man. and I love, I just love that, that, that dynamic. I love how you've taken and it inspires me to say okay well don't wait till the, the proverbial ied goes off in your life to do something like start today why not why can't you do that right now and so i i love it man it's not even just the element of working out and running and climbing mountains it's it's taking full advantage of the gift of the present the gift of today and maximizing in every way, whether as a dad, as a friend, as a husband, as a sailor, whatever that is, and, and to do something and just never to have someday enter the, our vernacular at all. And I think that that's what's inspiring to me about it. I freaking love it, dude. You got me fired up. I'm about to go PT right now and go <laughs> find my kids and give them a hug. That reminds <laughs> me of somebody, somebody asked me once, uh, you, don't, you don't have any eyes. How can you be so happy? <laughs> i said you have your eyes how can you be so miserable oh snap great answer 
Uh, but but the, the truth is, is that, you know, I, I, um, who was it? Uh, Jim, uh, General Mattis in Call Sign Chaos. He said, things being hard in, in, in the Marines, things being hard was never a good excuse for mission failure. <laughs> that man, I love that. That guy's, that guy's a badass. Yes. Um, but uh, it's true. It's like, when you think of it that way, you might as well cheer up because you still got to go on. Uh, I liken it to uh, the EOD team. And at least in the army, we roll as, as a three person, three a unit, right? And we get this big old shipping container full of tools like the bomb suits and the, the robots and all that kind of stuff, hazmat gear and all sorts of crazy things to combat uh, everything from bullets to nuclear weapons. I mean, that's everything, everything is in our wheelhouse that goes boom. And then that whole shipping container comes with us on deployment uh for each team and then we get uh to places like a, like a rack and we get that um armored truck which is a little bit smaller than the shipping container and then we gotta like triage which tools we're most likely gonna need in iraq and we pack every nook and cranny in that truck as best we can and we have to leave some tools behind um and then we get to like go to Iraq or go to Afghanistan and we're like on, on goat trails. Oh, no vehicles can go on these things. So we're dismounted. We're walking on foot. So we can only bring what tools we can carry on our backs or in EOD's case, those really cool chest fruits. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, but we, we leave a bunch of tools behind. And we're, we have to do the exact same job, no matter what hazards come our way. Uh, but all we're left with usually is like a, a, a spool of rope, a carabiner, maybe a knife, uh, a couple bear charges of C4, and then our water and our food. And, and the only other tool left to us is our imagination and the imagination of our team. But we still have a job to perform. Can't worry about the tools, we're left behind. We gotta use um, what we have at hand and the mission has to continue, cannot fail. So I took that philosophy, that mindset, and I just applied it to everything in my life. No matter what, I can't worry about the tools I left behind. It's gone, but I still have my responsibilities, my roles, I still have a life to live and I'm gonna do everything I can to make it a successful mission, a successful life. And I, I love that so much. Let's talk about, uh, so you've done all these amazing like physical feats. Let's talk about um, your entrepreneurial world. I mean, you've, you're, you're in our mastermind group. So you're doing real estate investing, you're running businesses, you're cooking, you're, you're on the Rachel Ray show. You're all over Instagram and have like thousands of followers. Uh, I it, it mean, it's amazing, man. Like what, what, uh, what kind of got you going down the path of being an entrepreneur and, and where did you start? Well, um, I, I lost, I, I, I was injured in 2011 and I was doing these things like running and climbing mountains and I was uh, doing public speaking. Um, but uh, it wasn't until 2015 and I was, I was actually two weeks away from flying to Africa and to attempt uh, my first, to, to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, when I was uh, sent to the hospital, uh, that, that the crack in my skull either reopened or never been fully patched. And um, I had a slow leak but a path out is also a path in and bacterial meningitis crept in. And it was, it was like, it was trying to eat my brain. Um, I mean, it was, it was the most excruciating thing I've ever experienced. Uh, and I've been blown up before. Uh, so uh, back in the hospital, um, this nearly killed me, but uh, I pulled through. And whether it was the, the bacteria itself or the heavy doses of antibiotics, but it stole what was left of my hearing that the bomb hadn't taken. So I was totally blind, totally deaf when I came back from the hospital. And there was a chance I could restore some of my hearing with the cochlear implant, but it wouldn't be 
uh, it would be over six months before one would have enough effect that I could actually get a message in. It was almost a year before I could actually understand uh, people's words. Um, but you know, imagine for over six months, just being trapped in your body, like your whole world ends at your fingertips. And I was just sitting at my, my breakfast bar, breakfast counter, um, I even lost my, my, my inner ear sense of, sense of balance, that inner uh, vestibular balance. So I couldn't even get my tre treadmill. I was using the trekking poles that I got, um, I would, you know, that once taken me into the mountains. I was using that just to get to my mailbox and back. So I'm, just, I'm sitting there and, oh, by the way, just a, a, a week before, um, just, just before uh, the meningitis, I, I, I'd, I'd had a first, a week long first date with this beautiful woman. Um, uh, someone I, I've known for uh, years, since childhood. Our mothers actually grew up as ch children together and we'd known each other since I think she was five, six years old. But we just connected, we started speaking. She was living in California, I was living in Florida and I convinced her to come out for a week long vacation slash first date. And we had a great time and then she went um, back home to work and I went on a speaking engagement, came back, boom, I'm in the hospital. She turned right back around. Did, I, I doubt she even unpacked her bags. Uh, and came right back and was by my side um, at the hospital even before the rest of my family had made it. And um, she began to nurse me back to health. And uh, one of the things she did was um, I couldn't hear, I couldn't communicate, I couldn't see or hear, I, like all the tools that I had that uh, spoke to me, mute. So she was writing every letter, every single word uh she needed to say to me into the palm of my hand i mean it was very frustrating very uh um uh difficult but that was the only way i could communicate wow. so i'm pretty i'm feeling pretty down those demons coming back you know the the uh why me what ifs like when does one guy you know paid his dues you know <laughs> when when have i had my you know when one guy has you know fair share right but uh it was Thanksgiving was coming up. It was a time of gratitude. You know, I had to remember what I was thankful for. And I had a lot to be thankful for. And I decided that we weren't going to have, we were going to let this ruin our Thanksgiving, our holidays. So I told Michaela, we're, we're going to have, um, we're just going to throw a huge Thanksgiving feast. By the way, she never left. I married that woman. She's an amazing woman. Um, so awesome. And we threw this huge holiday feast. I mean, two different turkeys and uh, the, the ham and all the fixings and all that. I started making uh, cakes and pies and cookies weeks in advance. I was doing uh, like a batch of fudge after another. Every time I would just change up the recipe a little bit. I'd do little nuts, little spices. I'd go to the liquor cabinet. And... Uh, and uh, Michaela noticed two things. You know, she'd been there with me for the six months while I was, I was uh, going through this transformation. And um, one, she noticed the, something she hadn't seen in that whole six months since our first date was a smile on my face. I was having a good time. I was actually cooking. And I was, I was, I was, I was, I was focused on the holidays, my family and gratitude. I was, I was grateful for who was going to be at my, my kitchen table or my, my, you know, my dining table. I even invited some um, stranded students at the EOD school. You know, you know, sometimes they don't have leave days or, you know, vacation days or money saved up for the holidays. And we invited them to our table. So, I was folks, I was, I was having a good time. First time in six months. The other thing she noticed was the fudge was just piling up. I mean, there's more fudge than anybody at a, one table could fit. 
So she started sneaking it out the front door and giving it away. Like you have to be real stealthy around a blind deaf guy. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she was giving it to the friends and neighbors and they started coming back and asking mm -hmm. if they could buy more uh, for a birthday party or shower or something. And the capitalist in me said, well, more, of course you may. And all of a sudden a business was started. And we called it Extraordinary Delights or EODFudge.com. EOD yeah, uh, that, that turned into a business. And um, it just really, it grew like the brand, the, um, uh, the orders started coming in. Um, and we were learning how to be entre entrepreneurs uh, at a really fast rate. You know, we we're just making mistakes all over the place and learning from them and doing it over and and growing. And it's a it's amazing. It's it's fun. And the uh, revenue generated from selling fudge. And I joke. I say I tell people uh, I sell fudge to buy real estate. And the truth is that's what I do. Uh, uh, we 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 have these these goodies online that we sell, and from that we we buy assets. Uh, and, and we bought. Um, and this is the funniest thing is uh, I decided you know we decided we wanted to go into real estate, and and, and this was 2018. You know when we thought the market couldn't get any hotter, um, and, and sort of like where are we going to buy? Where are we going to buy? How are we going to do this? What kind of real estate do we want to get into? And we settled on probably the hardest thing a blind deaf guy could possibly do is go out of state, buy at auction, sight unseen, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> using hard money <laughs> and a major heavy lift uh, rehab. And um, we were going to um, turn it into a rental. Uh, <laughs> Nice. Uh, so we, but but the truth is, um, we went. Uh, we started in Akron, Ohio, which is my hometown. My mom, my brother live there. There, um, they've done a few flips themselves. Uh, we, uh, they're, they're, they already have um, connections with real estate agents and, and um, contractors and all that. So it was kind of pre-built team, and um, thank goodness because of course the the house bought at auction was just a pig of a project and our and we didn't get the, the hard money because one of the learning things I had to go through was um, hard money uh, lenders want to lend only to entities and I didn't put the contract I put the contract in my own name so fudge money all the way <laughs> and um Oh, it didn't go all the way. So we had to find a private lender along the way to help us finish the uh, the, the project, which is new also. Anyways, it worked out really well. Um, all of our estimates were low. The real estate market and real estate in general is very forgiving. And um, it exceeded our expectations, though. Uh, it was a nail biter the whole way. And um, we did a cash out refinance of the first house to buy a duplex and another burr. Uh, we turned into actually a burr and B. We turned it into a short term rental. And the proceeds from all of those uh, are funding our latest project. And we became limited partners on a 52 unit apartment building in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Now, uh, my wife is a, a licensed agent here in the Florida Panhandle, and I just partnered with another uh, wounded veteran, a Navy buddy from my first deployment to Afghanistan as a cook, and he and I are doing wholesaling in the Pensacola area. Wow. Dude, I, I don't think you, I don't really think you've done enough, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think you, uh, I think you need to start getting some more stuff on your plate <laughs> don't you have like a hundred thousand instagram followers watching you do uh what do you what is it called cooking blind oh, yeah. no that was that was actually a um that was kind of a, one of those quarantine projects yeah <laughs> you, you did the sourdough starter and let's get on tiktok uh so uh, michaela you know my, my wife now 
Um, and I failed to you know, mention one of the best parts is that Mikhail and I got married. Um, we now have um, three boys and um, including identical twin toddlers that are two and a half years old because, you know, why should I be the only one that's confused? Why not? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and um, uh, Michaela one day, uh, I think it was Memorial Day 2020, um, just, just takes a phone, puts it in front of my face and says, start talking about Memorial Day. And then every day after that, we'd put out a video. And sometimes it was me talking about my experience as a blind person. Sometimes it was um, a cooking demonstration. And then it kind of turned into this Aaron Hales cooking without looking show. And we do kit, kit, yeah, we just do <laughs> kitchen hacks and recipes and all that kind of stuff. And it's been a lot of fun. And that, uh, uh, yeah, we have somewhere around 140,000 uh, followers now. And uh, somehow we got the attention of Rachel Ray. And for Veterans Day this year, I was invited onto the show. We were invited onto the show. Yeah, that's so cool, man. Yeah, that's yeah. rad. That, 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 is, that is phenomenal. I love that. I love that. And to think if you hadn't been blown up, potentially <laughs> none of this would have happened. <laughs> probably um uh earning uh mediocre wages and probably a, a pretty thick around the waist yeah wow and that is uh that's incredible it is an incredible story and and it's it's you know i i uh i, I think my favorite part of it is not from the it's not from the aspect of everything you've overcome which is significant and that's huge and and it's a, an amazing story but it's just the, the unrelenting desire to continue to keep pushing and you face adversity and you just keep pushing through it. You're encouraging others. You invest in others. You're very free with your time as well. You and I have been on a call recently um, just to chit chat. And, and, you know, I, I just love how giving you are of, of opportunities for others to learn from you and, and to, uh, you know, you invest in other people so much and so well. It's just a huge encouragement. And and I think that's probably my favorite part about it is is despite, you know, what others may see as as um as potential speed bumps, man, you just fly right over it and 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 you encourage others to be the best version of self. And I and I think that's that's pretty rad. I appreciate that. And you know, um something I learned probably you know, those first days, right, in uh, Walter Reed is that I do not have a monopoly on bad days or on pain or hardship, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I know all of us at some point or another have felt like nobody understands how bad it is for me, right? We, we all go through those times where, I mean, and our pain is unique, but it's not better or worse, you know, harder uh, than anybody else's pain. So yeah, it might be unique to you and you're the only one feeling it, but you're not alone and I'm not alone and I can't hold it over anybody else's head or exclude myself from my community and my family because I feel pain, they feel pain too. So if I can help share in their pain, it alleviates all of ours. So that's, and there's where empathy comes from. And it's not like, it's, it's, it's if we, it's it, it, like any other burden, if we share it, it all becomes lighter. Yeah, man. So what's, what's all this for? What's, what's kind of your, your, your big why, your, your purpose behind it at all? Like what's, what's your big vision of, of where you're going? Well, um, the future is, is about, about my family, about my three boys my wife and I just want to give them the best opportunity for them to learn and grow and have good lives so uh, for me it's just about being the best example uh, and then of course it's uh, you know you have those those circles expanding out and it's my military family and I want to um, 
have every opportunity or, or give every opportunity I can for them to learn and live and grow and, and have a better life. So for now, I, I, I give some money and I, I give of myself. So I speak across the country and I give, do podcasts and whatever I can. And I try to help where I can. And as you know, the income grows, I'm, my ability to give grows also. So of course, um, I try, uh, try every way I can to grow our financial base. And that's with uh, the, the, the chocolate business or the, the real estate. Um, I'm just, in fact, part of the reason um, I started the wholesaling business with uh, my buddy Danny is that he's about to retire, medically retire from the military. And I was having a really difficult time uh, with a lot of you know, software and, and spreadsheets. Oh my gosh, spreadsheets is like being lost in space to me. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's that's my version of hell. It's just a like a, a, a Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> so Danny can cover down on my weaknesses, and I'm teaching him. I brought him into a whole new world of real estate that he never even considered before. He, I don't know if he had a plan after retirement, but he's a single dad with two awesome kids, and I wanted to show him. I wanted. To, I, I expanded his mindset. I opened the window. And I opened up, opened up the door for him and showed him this whole other room. And I am, I, I feel that that's, that makes me proud. That makes me feel more fulfilled that I gave, showed him that there's opportunity out there. I mean, he's got to work. <laughs> you know, we're, we've got a business to build, but he had no idea before then. And that makes me feel incredibly good. And if I can do that with my story, or if I can, I can tell others about any aspect of physical fitness, if it's uh, just mindset, if it's uh, finances, real estate, all that kind of stuff, I'll share it all because that makes me feel great. Dude, you're, you're an inspiration, man. You are a huge influence and uh, wow. I uh, fire me up, man. I want to like, I want to like, <laughs> go like take over the world right now. Uh, Aaron, so how how can people what's the best way for people to get in touch with you if if our listeners want to reach out and um you know kind of learn more from you and and, and connect well uh if you want to learn more about um the real estate side uh go to hailcapitalgroup.com if you'd uh, like to buy our fudge and watch a really cool video about our story uh go to eodfudge.com if you'd like to watch some cool cooking without looking, go to TikTok and it's at EOD Confections. And if you'd like to get on our buyers list or want to become an investor, go to solidgroundhomebuyers.co. That's awesome. And we'll put all those in the show notes. Um, man, I really appreciate you coming on. I, uh, I don't even know what to say, man. I'm fired up. This is good stuff. Well, thank yeah, you thank so you, much. Aaron. No, this, uh, was, this was awesome. This, uh, I think our listeners will definitely get a lot of value. And if, uh, if nothing else, you know, to, to remove someday from, from our vocabulary and, and get after it today. So I love it, dude. You're awesome. Appreciate it. Can't wait to uh, get some more of this fudge. And uh, we're, it sounds like we're going to have to take a trip out to Florida and, and meet with you at some point. So that'd be great. And uh, David, too, I want to thank you also. Um, part of the reason, a lot of the reason I'm able to do this is because I'm a member of the, uh, uh, the War Room Mastermind. And uh, I get to you know, rub elbows virtually with some guys that are doing some, uh, many, many people that are doing some amazing things and that are expanding my mind and uh, what I can do. And, uh, and I really appreciate you uh, building that forum. Yeah, man. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing to have you. Um, well, guys and gals, so I, I, will, I will attest the fudge is amazing. Uh, yep. David and I are, have crushed it uh, many of times. We've sent it to our team all in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, that, and they're crushing it. Uh, so go get that for sure. Like buy it for the holidays, um, get it 
before the new year and then you can kind of like reset yourself uh to uh, not eat some fudge you know at the beginning of the year for your new um your new goals but uh and then hey obviously huge inspiration go reach out to him get on his buyers list um connect with him about all the real estate stuff he's doing um yeah this is good david you got anything else no no it's been great super uh love talking to you as always and uh, just super excited for what you can do in the future as you continue to grow and expand your influence and uh just just happy to to be a part of your network and and to consider you a friend and and uh, hey man fire it up no more some days let's crush it get some get some no more some days all right ladies and gents go uh, share this podcast i know it, i know it motivated you so go tell others about it reach out to aaron and uh, most importantly go fill that storehouse make it a great day friends today every day every day Peace. not someday today not someday today see ya see ya